Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Dowlings Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. Tonight, uh, our topic is going to be movies and television and I'm turning it over to Dave to uh, uh, run the show. All right, here's the rules. We're going to talk about movies and television shows that have inspired us. For each one that we suggest, we're going to provide the year that it came out and some reason for why it inspires us. And, and we'll see if there's any discussion that ensues because of that. Um, however, I stipulated up front uh, that we were, were not going to talk about the perennial favorites, Star Trek or Star Wars. So without further ado, I'll throw out the, the question, um, name a movie or TV show that has inspired you. Who wants it? I'll take the first one. Okay. So, um, Logan's Run is an oldie but a goodie uh, that I actually was first exposed to during uh, a college class called uh, Fantasy and Social Values. It was mixing anthropology and science fiction and fantasy. And uh, so it was a really uh, cool movie to watch in class. It's always fun to watch movie in class. So it's always a good class day. Um, and I was just really charmed by, you know, they use they use like a little train, a little toy train set and a little diorama to show some wide shots of a futuristic uh, environment. You know, lots of cute little devices that they did for uh, for their graphics back then. Okay, but I was really charmed by. You got what you got. You got what you got, and they did a good job with it. And it was a great story, interesting characters. It just, there's something, I don't know if I love it because of the actual story, or if I love it because of just that, like, old Hollywood kind of nostalgic vibe. I don't know. It just, it really stuck with me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Big it was fan. also based on a science fiction book by William F. Nolan of the same name. Thank you. <laughs> For adding that. Okay. And yeah, that was a that was a great movie. I always love that too. Funny story about that. I never saw it in the theater when it first came out. And I saw it on television initially, uh, which was heavily edited. And when I finally got around to buying it on DVD, I was like surprised it was, you know, it was a rated R. It was uh, uh way better than I remember seeing it on my little 19 inch TV. Yeah, I, I own it actually. On, yeah, uh, I own it as well. All right, next up. I'll go. Um, um, first one on my list. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to cheat and just say Terminator, which was 1984. Oh, that was mine. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Avatar. Top, top of my list. Uh, okay, in right. fact, the whole the whole uh, um, uh, Terminator franchise has been really. Uh, um, a pleasure to watch and uh, enjoy. The reason why it's inspiring to me, one, I love time travel stuff. The, the plot within the story was very original. I liked, I really enjoyed it. The casting was fabulous. I uh, um, thought Michael Bean was really great. Love Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was literally the perfect role for him at the time he was made for that role yeah he he, he was re really awesome i understand that he was actually cast as the hero in it initially mm -hmm. and when he finally got the script and everything he talked james cameron into letting him uh uh play the terminator instead uh yeah. his agent really didn't want him to do it but um it was great and then terminator 2 I, i'll just toss that out right now Oh man, that was a thrill ride. The special effects when that came out with the liquid metal was just amazing, amazing. Yeah, I think that was just about the most expensive movie made at the time it came out, uh, mm -hmm. T2. Um, the, one of the things I really liked about T1 was I was a teenager working in a movie theater when it came out. That movie came out of nowhere. Like Hollywood didn't know what had happened. It came out, it was number one for six weeks and by a no-name director, low budget. So the original, people forget the original Terminator was a low budget film made for like $6 million. Um, and yet it had these world-class special effects and the great plot and stuff. So it was, it was yep. pretty groundbreaking. Yeah. Love okay. it. All right, Jeffrey. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, a perennial, one of the perennial remades. Uh, 
The War of the Worlds by Herbert George uh, Wells. And um, I'm a fan of the 1960s version. But of course, um, there's also another version of it that many people might not know, but many people do. Independence Day that came out in, uh, in 1996. And that was a version of War of the Worlds. So it has been remade under different names, but it's always the same. Invasion, and somehow we scrappy humans get way save the day. Now, all that said, Tom Cruise in 2019, meth. But I really do like the 60s version. I mean, it's the special effects were goofy, but I liked goofy. And I will mention why I like Goofy in one of my other picks. But right now we're talking about War of the Worlds. And I just think, uh, you know, there's something about the 1950s and 60s and how they made science fiction that just has a, a dear place in my heart. Yeah, one of the great things that I found inspiring with uh, uh, War of the Worlds, the 50s version, is that um, the scientists were the heroes of that, of that movie. It's not some, you know, kick-ass soldier or, you know, uh, some, some other thing. In that, in that movie, it was, and in a lot of movies in the 50s, um, scientists were actually the heroes um, of the movies. That, that was a really great, inspiring part of that. Yeah. 1960, though, technically. Yeah, well, I still like the Tom Cruise version. Yeah, okay. And I'm not a big Please. Tom Cruise fan. I had a lot of fun with that one. I've never seen it. I, I never could uh, get myself to see the Tom Cruise version. I, I will say the 1960s version um, swapped the uh, the tripods for these flying Martian vehicles. And even to this day, uh, I mean, I remember how, how eerie I thought they were as, as a kid. Uh, I, th I thought that was one of the best things they did in the entire film was mm -hmm. how they reimagined the, the, the Martian equipment. Yeah, and, yeah there is uh, a, a British... Um, version of War of the Worlds just came out this year and it's kind of steampunk Victorian you know turn of the century 1900 and it was gritty and um, um, dirty and violent and it was it was pretty good too it was a yeah. short miniseries I liked it three episodes I, I liked the first two-thirds of it and then I thought it sort of got weaker and yeah. Marty, my apologies, you are right, is my 53. The other one movie that I was going to mention was 60. You're right, this was 53. So this is a, one of my all-time favorite movies, not just, my, not just one of my favorite sci-fi movies, but if not my favorite movie. Uh, it's called Her, H-E-R, mm. by Spec Jonze, uh, directed by. What absolute, one of my absolute favorite movies, I think one of Joaquin Phoenix's best movies, even though he's very underplayed in that movie. He's, he's, um, it's one of the few situations where a passive protagonist actually works pretty well. Um, but it's, uh, it, it inspired me to rethink romance, to rethink relationships with technology, so there's so much. I can really gush about this movie all day. But for those who haven't seen it, a man falls in love with a computer, and it's actually like by the end of it, you actually kind of root for them. It's very. Well, it's not just a computer. It's the uh, it's the personalized um, assistant. I was trying to simplify. Yeah. Yeah. Computer, yeah. Artificial intelligence assistant yeah. that he has in his phone. Yeah. Um. Just it's just amazing. I, I, do you guys agree? Do you love that movie? It's a good film. That's a good film. Very good film. Yeah. Concepts. Very good concept. Yeah, for sure. So that's 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 one that I think knocked it out of the park. Yeah, a pretty good choice. Um, so I'll give you one of my choices. Um, a little movie from 1993 called Groundhog Day, starring Bill <laughs> Murray. Now, not only is it a pretty good uh, romantic comedy, it's also one of the first, uh, and po possibly the first I can really think of, uh, time loop film, and it totally nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my uh, all-time Completely and totally watchable, films. even nowadays. Yeah, it's yeah. a good film. Oh, it is. And it's, it's kind of started that whole uh, time loop subgenre, sub right? Yeah. In books and in, in, and in movies. I think there's at least uh, three or four of the time loop movies that came out in um, uh, 2020. Yeah. Yeah. 
and I've seen them all, and I, I really still love the premise. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow is another example uh, yeah. of a time loop movie. Really good stuff. Really great uh, uh, original, inspiring premise. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I did, if we're ready, I mean, I, I, I did confuse 1960, because the movie that I wanted to mention that came out in 1960, the bread and butter of my life, time travel, the time machine, again by Herbert George Wells. 1960s, 1960 version was inspirational. I love that movie, the sets, that time machine. When that appeared in Big Bang Theory, I was like, I want that. Uh, you know, that time machine is so quintessentially beautiful and, and well-constructed. And that whole plot was just, it was a little goofy, I'll admit, but I mean, it was fun. Now the, the version that came out in uh, 2002, meh, it's okay. It's okay, but I really like the classic version, you know, and, and, and I'm going to put one more in here, and that's not necessarily Time Machine, but since we're talking about this, 60s, uh, 60s British science fiction, Quatermass. Quatermass was about a scientist that basically discovered that there's some nefarious, um, you know, biological evil going on, and it it was, a, it was a cult classic. Not many people know about Quatermass. It was remade uh, later, but that in 62, when they made Quatermass, they say that that was one of the inspirations for something else that I'm going to bring up. But I'm not going to talk about that just yet because I want to give my... Yeah, I haven't, seen that. I haven't seen that movie. Now I'm going to have to see it. I've heard about the film, but I've never, I've never actually seen it. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. There is a modern version of it. I forget what year that came out, but... Uh, yeah, if it's streaming somewhere, we'll have to hunt it down and put oh, the... Oh, yeah, definitely. Let's have a viewing party. Quater Mass, it's a good one. Bless you, David. Bless you, Dave. Sorry, <laughs> I, I did hit mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it catch. is allergy season for me, uh, for our reviewers. <laughs> so the uh, next movie I'll bring up that I, I was on my list, um, it's a more recent one, one of the few... Uh, Oscar nominated sci fi films, genre fiction, sci fi fantasy doesn't tend to usually get as much attention at the Oscars. But um, this one is Arrival, which was a 2016 nominee. I wanted it to win um, Best Picture. I thought that it did such a great job of keeping a feeling of dread and suspense throughout the whole film, even though the aliens were really not that aggressive. It was just a very spooky situation. It was, I, I will never forget like the opening scene where it's just like a teacher teaching a class and then it's like breaking news. Like imagine if you were to just get that, um, your whole existence would just change. Um, so, and just how they dealt with the arrival of the aliens, um, the language component to it, the linguistic component to it was really interesting, got me thinking. So yeah, that one was definitely an inspiration uh, for me to deepen my thought about aliens. Yeah, another one based on a uh, uh, novelette by uh, Ted Chiang. Oh, is it? Well, I have to say, for me to to like applaud an alien movie is like a big deal because I know this is like a rare fear, but I actually have a very I would almost call it a phobia, but uh, a very intense fear of aliens. Not just like any aliens. I'd be fine if the alien was very, um, was like an animal, like without n a non-intelligent alien. Um, but if it is a intelligent extraterrestrial who is humanoid or at least, I don't know, can think and talk, that, that really creeps me out. <laughs> so, well, I do have some good news for you, Shay. Most aliens are actually microbes. Uh, if there are any. <laughs> Yeah, microbes. just microbes. Uh, hey, personally, but, uh, I have a fear of plush toys. <laughs> <laughs> plush toys. Hey, one of my one of my favorites before we uh, um, get uh, out of um, uh, old movies is Forbidden Planet. Oh, um, yeah. That is just still holds up the special effects, mm -hmm. the premise. Um, I love the concept of finding. The ruins of an ancient alien civilization. Just the premise there alone has been done again and again. And I really enjoyed the movie and the acting and the characters and um, the special effects in that, even though it's from 1954. 
Just because the just because the premise has been done over and over again doesn't mean it gets any less interesting. Yeah. <laughs> if it's done well. Jeffrey, I was just kidding about the plush toys. No, I know, but uh, I did realize that uh, I probably used that in the last episode. I don't know, guys. If you if I did use that in the last episode, I'm sorry. Well, we're talking uh, about science fiction. I'll give you another movie. Um, there's a little movie that came out in 1997. It was uh, an independent film made for under a million dollars. Mm-hmm. Called Cube. Oh yeah, Cube. That was an amazing I love that movie. movie. I absolutely is, yeah. love that movie. The premise Talk about movie. fear of you know, like dread. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, you know. Set it up, David. Set it up. The the premise is that six people are trapped in a cube mm-hmm. uh, of cubes, um, and the cubes um, basically each cube uh, has a hatch in every wall. And then the floor and ceiling, so you can move to other cubes within this overall uh, larger. So cube, weird, right? Mm-hmm. Now, all the different cubes are lit differently. They have different characteristics. Some of them contain traps that will kill you. Uh, some of them you need to solve puzzles in order to either survive or to get out of, et cetera, et cetera. So all the characters have to pull their skills and figure out how to navigate um, if they're going to escape the cube. It's low budget. It's independent. Every single character has a meaningful arc. Mm -hmm. And it's a pretty incredible film on a pretty incredible budget. I I first found it on DVD. I remember I watched the film. Then I watched the film again with the the director's track on to find out what they did. And then I watched the film again. I literally spent like five hours watching the film the first time I saw it. It it is a very good film. Very good. Um, the sequels, not so much, but so much. Cube the, was we really never write great. Sequels. <laughs> the other thing I, I really like about it, since we are all writers, is, my God, what a splendid piece of writing to come up with such an interesting plot, such interesting character interactions right? in basically one set. Mm-hmm. You played it differently and stuff, but it was basically mm-hmm. one set. That was pretty incredible. Just like one room total for the whole movie. Under yeah. a million. Uh, they, that, uh, just like the way they used to do it in the 60s. It's, if you look at it from that perspective, it, it's a filmmaking tour de force. Mm-hmm. I will, if I may, I'm going to take another movie from 1997, if I may. Contact by Carl Sagan. D. Carl Sagan, maker of Cosmos. I mean... That in, was an inspiration to me because Carl Sagan was an inspiration to me. And he, he was a great person to present science to the layman and say how wonderful and how amazing M31 and all the other things in the cosmos were. And then to create a, uh, have humanity create a wormhole to talk to another civilization, which he actually talked to physicist Kip Thorne to work out the physics to make sure that it was as authentic as possible. I mean, it was it was a truly hard science fiction as much as it could be, a piece of scientific uh, of science fiction, and I really loved that movie. It was a good solid film. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I, sure the characters uh, aren't great, but I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw in a pair of Will Smith movies because Will Smith and sci-fi just go really well together. So here's yeah. my pair. I'm going to give you Men in Black, and I'm going to give you Our Robot. What do you say to that? Yes. Both of those are great um, movies. Yes. You know. I think they're fun movies more than they're great movies. But you yeah, fun. fun like, Will Smith Saves the World, Summer, you know, yeah. action, yeah. adventure. You just... But, and and it's so, Men in Black is so <laughs> funny. Because I just crack up every time I watch that. But I did mention Independence Day, so. Or three now, three Will Smith movies in. Yeah, he really goes well. Yeah, but I, you know, there's nothing wrong with humor with your science fiction. Yeah. As as a Hitchco- as Hitchhik- hitchhikers got to the galaxy would tell you. Another another series I, that I love. Yeah. I love well, time. there's nothing wrong with horror in science fiction because like yeah. aliens uh, or mm-hmm. alien yeah, yeah. alien. Alien. Those movies were real yeah. inspirations for me. Sure. Um, back from the from the mid '80s. Um, yeah. Sigourney Weaver, awesome in both of those. And what I like about those two movies is they were completely different movies. 
Well, sure. Alien then, was a horror film. Logically, uh, transition was really awesome. I mean, Alien was a horror film, and, and yeah. Aliens was a war film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and I and I love the um, the military science fiction aspects. Mm-hmm. In Aliens, it was uh, both of those are really really good inspirations. Well, another one I've got is uh, Highlander from 1986. Mm-hmm. Now, movie. I watched it How fairly recently. I think it's a little more dated than I remembered it being. But yet, even though it's over the top, even though the, the soundtrack is, is awesome, but maybe overpowering, it's got some problems. But, you know, to tell a story across so much time and to go back and forth between the current day and flashbacks to, to older times, um, I thought structurally it was really cool. I'd mm-hmm. never really seen a film that kind of jumped back and forth like that and made you like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's got problems, but uh, I, I still find it a very uh, inspirational and groundbreaking film, especially for its time period. And yeah, that was another movie series. that came out of nowhere. Yeah. I, you know, it's like absolutely original, n- completely unexpected. Exactly. Um, I had a friend said, just told me, Marty, you got to go see this movie. Don't, mm-hmm. don't look at a thing about it. Just go see it. And I really enjoyed the hell out of that. It was a killer performance by Sean Connery, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, Absolutely. And I will mention another one. uh, You know, 1992, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The movie was okay, but it spawned an amazing media empire with Buffy the Vampire TV series and and Angel. We were debating earlier if that's urban fantasy or sci-fi. Yeah, it is urban fantasy. Yeah, I don't mean sci-fi, but it it is groundbreaking. It is groundbreaking, and it was it was a very I loved watching all of those, especially Angel. All right, I'm going to throw out maybe the only animated one that Ooh. we will mention tonight. One that I absolutely love. one of my favorite movies from Disney is Treasure Planet, which um, is a reimagining of Treasure Island in space. So they have these big ships, these big galleys that sail through space dust and, and the cosmos, um, lots of interesting cyborg type uh, pirates. Uh, but yeah, that, that's actually a great way to describe it. Cyborg pirates looking for treasure in space. That is yeah. Treasure Planet. And it's please, great. Please oh, tell oh, me that's on Disney Plus. What's that? Tell me, I say, please tell me that's on Disney Plus. I think it is, yeah. So I, I've never seen that. Uh, I've heard about it, but I've never, I've never actually seen it. I want to check it out. Actually, there's a giant pile of animated movies. If you just want to rattle off, oh yeah, some. I mean, I love The Incredibles and Incredibles Two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Iron Wall-E, um, Talk about inspirational Wally. Oh, that yeah. movie in, was incredible. There wasn't a line of dialogue until like 45 minutes in. It yeah. was very, very well done. Really good science fiction, and the animation in it was just fabulous too. Mm-hmm. I, I uh, you, you remember the Iron Giant? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Iron Giant, great. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is um, hybrid animation in that part computer, mm-hmm. part um, the old fashioned uh, hand drawn. That's a great movie too. I love that movie. Yeah. I own that movie too. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so you can tell we all love movies. Yeah, yeah we, we got we got through a lot of good ones. But uh, you know, television. We didn't mention Buffy, but I gotta tell you, what Quatermass inspired was a phenomenon. 1963, Doctor Who, and again in 2005. Nothing has inspired me more than the Doctor traveling through time. He or she, it is just an amazing adventure to me. Yeah, I think that there is actually a lot of really awesome time travel movies out there i mean you can talk about the different kinds of time travel movies we we already talked about the time loop movies mm-hmm. there's uh terminator that's another time travel movie with um the terminator going into the past there's a time machine there's a ton of them i mean we've mm-hmm. mentioned lots and lots of them and and that- another category of science mm-hmm. fiction um movies that have inspired me are dystopian, um, post-apocalyptic 
movies like The Road Warrior. Mm. Um, um, I I love those movies. Uh, Mad Max, Beyond Thunderdome, uh, you know, The Road Warrior, all of those. Those yeah. are really uh, apocalyptic. Um, uh, really great world building in those. Are we counting movies. zombie movies as sci-fi? <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess you could do that. I mean, I, I cheated on the zombie movies I love too. <laughs> I like the uh, Warm Bodies. Have you guys seen that one? Oh, I have. That was a good movie. It was. It's not like you know World War Z or Walk, uh, Walking Dead, like where it's like very much aggressive. Um, it was a romance theater. actually yeah. between yeah. a living person zombie. and a zombie, and it, it was, was a zombie rom com. Yeah, zombie rom com, but it was also very gory. <laughs> it had some very scary moments. But it was cute, and it was short, and it was just, I don't know, it just kind of hit the spot for me. Uh, and that's also based off of a book that was very good and didn't get a lot of attention because the movie took most of the attention. Um, but the book is actually very good, too. So if you like that, yeah. I mean, if we're going to talk about that, I mean, Night of the Living Dead, um, the original. Yeah, yeah there's a bunch of ton of zombie films out there yeah. It's uh, that are fun if you, if you love zombie movies. I mean, you know, a lot of people fantasize about shooting people in the face. So uh, I, can, I can really understand that. I think I'm going to rule that the zombies are technically horror. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. How, about yeah. The, uh, how about the Fifth Element? My dad would kill me if I didn't mention that. Oh, yeah. Fifth Element is a classic, great movie. I love that movie. Yeah. yeah. Just going to say that there was a racial overtone to the 1968. Anyway, I'm done talking. I've said, I've said a lot. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's about time to wrap it up. Yeah. I, I right, think anyway. we've given any of our viewers a heck of a lot of good movies to, to, to yeah. choose from. Yeah. So much inspiration. Well, these. I got to add one more because this okay. is uh, one of my favorite okay. sci-fi films that yes, nobody ever, ever seen. It's a movie called Dark City. Um, I will have it, to watch it. It was, uh, you know, was, a lot of people think that it was the foundation of The Matrix series so dark city right watch and matrix was cool i watched dark yeah city. matrix was another one great yeah. so wrap it up dave all right well watch some great movies we've given you a lot of choices indeed and you if you really were bored watch all that doctor who and another yep. really finally structured episode <laughs> thanks man see you yeah. next week